blood. It is the universal life-giving fluid that we all share. Our bodies produce and maintain this vital substance, but there are many instances, be it surgery, trauma, or disease, when blood from another person is needed. I receive transfusions every eight or 10 days. Our daughter, Erin, um, was diagnosed with leukemia at age three, and um, thanks to the blood and blood products that she's received, she is now age seven. Um, she sailed through first grade, and she's doing remarkably well. Uh, blood transfusions have saved my life. I'm definitely sure of that. Blood cannot be manufactured. It can only come as a gift from people. And although it is common to us all, it does have its own unique characteristics. What we learn about the blood and where it comes from determines where it can and will go. And to ensure it is properly given, we check the history of its source, the donor, and test the blood. We identify its type. We check its compatibility with the patient. And then, from donation to transfusion, new lifelines are formed. Well, I'd be very, very thankful to them, uh, to anyone who donated blood that I used. Uh, it'd be like, uh, it's almost like the gift of life. I do believe that donating blood is a gift of life. It's something that we can give no matter if we have a lot of money in our checkbook or a lot of time in our day. It doesn't take either of those things. Blood donors come from throughout the community and they each supply a portion of the 128,000 units of blood needed annually at Mayo Clinic. I donate uh, for various reasons, but specifically because my daughter has, our daughter has been a recipient of a lot of blood and blood products. Before they can donate, blood donors are given a physical exam and must verify their current health condition. They are also asked a series of screening questions about their personal medical history. When I go to donate blood, I'm asked a very lengthy list of questions about exposures that I may have had to blood and blood products, to potential infectious diseases, to at-risk behaviors. The thorough, complete interview makes me feel that the products my daughter is getting are safe. Uh, donating blood is um, somewhat uncomfortable, but no more than, say, a mosquito bite in Minnesota or a, a simple poke on your finger. It doesn't take very long, maybe 30 to 45 minutes. And when you're done, you meet with a volunteer who has juice or cookies or a treat of some kind for you um, to make sure that you're feeling well before you leave. One unit of blood can help as many as three people. And while statistics show that the number of transfusions nationwide increases by 9% every year, only 5% of eligible donors across the nation donate blood. If I could speak to the population about donating blood, um, to summar summarize it, I would say that it's a very safe process. Um, it will take up you know, a minimal amount of your time, and the impact of what you're doing as you donate blood um, really cannot be measured in words. It's one of those things that you can do that um, the value is not measurable. After a unit of blood is donated, it is labeled and taken to the lab for processing. But before this procedure begins, all units of blood are tested for certain diseases that can be carried in the blood, such as hepatitis, HIV AIDS, syphilis, and West Nile virus. Any blood that does not pass all the testing is discarded. If, however, the blood is determined safe for use, it is then separated into three components red blood cells that carry oxygen through the body, platelets that help the blood clot, and plasma, the liquid part of the blood that also helps the blood clot and carries nutrients throughout the body. During a blood transfusion, patients may be given only one of the blood components, red blood cells, platelets, or plasma, or a combination of these components, depending on their medical condition. But before these products are given to a patient, all components are processed carefully to ensure that they are prepared in a sterile manner, labeled, and stored properly. Uh, when a unit of blood is donated, uh, all the bags that are connected in that set are all given the same common, what's referred to as unit number, and that unit number stays on those bags all through the processing. 
Uh, the various parts of whole blood or the components can be stored typically. Red blood cells for 42 days. Plasma can be stored for a year, in some cases up to seven years, and platelets for five days. At Mayo Clinic, physicians are responsible for determining the type of blood products a patient needs as part of their treatment. An order is then placed with the lab, where the unit of blood undergoes an extensive series of tests before it is given to the patient. The first test performed identifies the blood type and RH factor. Blood types are classified in four main categories, A, B, AB, and O. The RH factor refers to the presence or absence of a specific antigen in the blood. Everyone is either RH positive or RH negative, meaning they either have the antigen or they do not. The blood type and RH factor are matched for transfusions. The blood type information is also compared with information about the patient from previous blood typing tests performed at Mayo. The second test looks for special types of red cell antibodies that could shorten the life of the red cell or cause a transfusion reaction. It is important to remember that due to the thoroughness of testing, severe transfusion reactions are extremely rare at Mayo, less than 1% and receiving blood from a family member does not reduce this minimal risk any further. The third and final test that is performed before a unit of blood is given is called the cross match. This test helps to determine if the red cells will be compatible with the patient's blood. For this procedure, a technician will verify the identity of the patient and get a small blood sample. A few drops of blood from the donated unit are then mixed with the patient's blood sample to see how the red cells react. If the blood is compatible, the transfusion can proceed. So is donated blood safe? Considering that our donors are carefully screened and each unit of blood is thoroughly tested for infectious diseases, carefully processed, properly labeled and stored, and carefully tested for compatibility with the patient? The answer is yes. The blood transfusion procedure is not a painful procedure. It is very similar to having an intravenous started for you, um, which many patients have every day in the hospital. The procedure that is involved is um, the blood test itself is just a poke in the arm, and that's, when you look around Mayo, there's hundreds of people doing it, so I figured I could do that too. Our nurses are very specially trained to do blood transfusions. They go through a very detailed procedure on how to identify the patient. Before I receive the blood, I have to spell my name, give my clinic number, they check, you know, be sure I'm getting the right stuff. And uh, so I guess that's their primarily way, primary way of, of assuring that you're getting the right thing. When the nurse arrives at the patient's bedside and all of the identification procedures have been performed, the nurse will start an IV and um, check the patient's blood pressure, pulse, respiration, and stand with the patient for 10 minutes while the blood is beginning to flow. It takes about one and a half to two hours for the blood unit of blood to flow in to the patient. And during this time, the patient can watch television, rest in bed, relax, read a book, whatever is comfortable. And that's the way a blood transfusion happens. Life through the perspective of a seven-year-old is very different. <laughs> so for her, getting a bag of blood is, is like getting gas in your tank. She doesn't really understand the whole process. She just knows that when you go to the hospital and you don't feel well and they give you a bag of blood, you leave feeling so much better. Blood cannot be manufactured. It can only be given as a gift from people. And as we have seen, to ensure it is properly given, it is thoroughly examined and tested. Its type is identified. It is checked for compatibility. And then, from donation to transfusion, new lifelines are formed. For the most part, we need to rely on real people who give real blood and uh, 
I'm very, very grateful for that, that there are people that do that. I see the benefits of it in my life every day with my daughter, and um, she's just one of many who benefit from the, the willingness of people who are uh, able to donate so generously of their time and uh, their, their blood. Without blood transfusions, obviously, I wouldn't uh, probably be sitting here. So uh, I'm very thankful that I have the blood transfusions to bring me back to normal. It's almost like the gift of life, and that obviously is pretty powerful. For additional information on blood donation, contact the Mayo Blood Donor Center at 507-284-4475. If you have questions or concerns about blood transfusion or the contents of this video, contact your healthcare provider.